welcome back guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous and I do mean over the top beautiful. It is the first day of winter. <laughs> 2022. The fall of 2022 is behind us. It is a glorious first day of winter 2022 slash 2023 here on this glorious. That would make it a Wednesday, December 21st, 2022. I guess we have survived 10 years, uh, you know, after the collapse of a planet that was supposed to happen 10 years ago today. So good for us. We have inflicted 10 more years of carnage onto our fellow earthlings. So anyway guys, I had it all prepared today that I was going to do my daily chronicle of the collapse about this. This might be the most darkly ironic, absurd subject uh, that has ever come out of the United Nations and that is about this hilarious, unadulterated horseshit. 30 by 30, how we are, so the UN has now voted a new landmark historic agreement that we are going to save the 30% of the planet. Uh, over the next eight years, we have, you know, uh, but I've, the problem is I have already had my rant, everything you need to know about UN biodiversity talk. So you can find that on here in a couple of weeks. And I also had this rant buried down in the middle of my Manga Bay rant a couple of weeks ago. So instead of doing the uh, full rant, I, I'm just going to dispense with this and then I'm going to get uh, back to soft white underbelly and, and I think I could pretty much for the next week or so at least just pretty much dedicate my channel to responding to comments uh, from my interview on soft white underbelly. So we're going to get to those comments in a minute. So anyway, if you already heard me talk about this on Manga Bay a couple of weeks ago, you can tune it out. This, this whole idea of saving 30% of the planet, uh, <laughs> I guess, in the, in, in the next eight years. So let's put aside the fact ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. But let, let's, let's put aside that fact that uh, it, there is no way we are going to save 30% of the planet because, you know, 100% of the planet is already doomed. So let's put that little bright green lie out of sight, out of mind, like all of the other bright green lies that these little mainstream greeny environmentalists uh, want to believe. And of course we got to put aside the fact that even what the mainstream media is talking about, how the United Nations has never once in its entire life has never reached one of its biodiversity goals. And that's not a bright green lie. That, that, that is a deep green fact that every single biodiversity goal that the UN has uh, made uh, has failed, been a, been a total abject failure. You can even find that in the mainstream media in the same article talking about how the, the goal of saving 30% of a planet uh, <laughs> is going to be the same level of historic landmark agreement as the Paris Agreement, which I agree with 100%. That is exactly what it's going to be. The same level of historic landmark agreement, meaning like the Paris Agreement, it is not, <clears throat> even if the goal was reached that we were going to save 30% of the planet, it will do nothing on any level 
to save an entire planet. Okay, let's put aside the fact that this agreement is entirely voluntary. <clears throat> and we are not, at this point, uh, especially for the new subscribers here, I am not going to get in to my noble savage rant about how you can have a protected area that has humans living in it. Okay? If an area of habitat has humans in it, it is not protected, which brings, so we're going to put the whole noble savage uh, thing uh, to rest. Uh, then, of course, the very term protected area is right up there with sustainable development and green energy as, you know, the big, one of the biggest oxymorons of the 20th century. There is no such thing as a protected area on this planet as long as humans, be they noble savages or us guilty honkies or anybody else walking on it. So we're going to put all of that aside and, and just look at like, am I the only human being? Because I'm seeing this down here in the Doomosphere in my own comments from intelligent people that I know personally acting like saving... <laughs> Saving 30% of a planet uh, is, <laughs> is, you know, just a, a lofty goal, which is another way, of course, saving 30% of the planet is another way of saying the UN has just reached a historic landmark agreement to uh, just doom 70% of the planet. It, it has now got the official seal of the United Nations and unbelievable how many uh, of these uh, little lefty, greeny, mainstream environmental organizations are cheering on the United Nations just admitting that 70% of the planet is screwed. But, you know, as I said in that Manga Bay thing, uh, I, I guess saving 30% of the planet, it, it, you know, is better than saving no planet at all. At least uh, the, the clueless morons are beginning to get the idea that we aren't going to save an entire planet. They're, they're just going to have to change all the bumper stickers. Uh, you know, it reminds me, there's this excellent video somewhere out there of Paul Kingsnorth back right before he turned into some whack job Christian where Paul Kingsnorth was in front of one of these uh, giant wind farms, these industrial wind farms, and, and Paul is, is, is like, you know, saying something like, like this. You know, there used to be a day when he called himself an environmentalist, when environmentalist would have been outraged, outraged by these giant industrial level wind farms, solar farms, all the rest of this crap. And uh, Paul Kingsnorth, like Sam Mitchell, is no longer an environmentalist. That the fact th th that environment people calling themselves acting like they're concerned about a planet and, and, and can sit there with no trace of irony and, and, and talk about how saving 30% of a planet is a lofty goal. It says more about the state of mainstream environmentalism than any other. That, you know, and, and I haven't you know, I've been looking, waiting for one person so I could go on medium.com or whatever and, and read one other doomer calling this unadulterated horseshit out. Uh, but, but anyway, this, this is the reason that I am not 
an environmentalist as I was talking yesterday. So really, that's my rant. I was, I was going to read a, a couple of articles and respond point by point, but that's the main point. Uh, saving 30% of a planet that is 100% doomed. But anyway, since I'm no longer going to do that, I'm kind of just going to do what I started to do yesterday, guys. And I could almost make an entire new channel, at least for the next couple of weeks, just going down, responding to the comments on my interview with Soft White Underbelly. I see how many comments do we have? All right, 92,000 views. We have 2,759 comments. I have, I have stirred up a hornet's nest, uh, and that's what I do is try to uh, encourage the debate. All right, so these are the, these are, I'm just going to go down the latest comments, starting at the first one, and these are my responses to the various people who, various supporters and detractors. We're going to start with Andreas Mayer. <clears throat> Technology is what has allowed him, meaning me, to reach the age 63. He is, as opposed to the average of 35 years pre-industrial revolution. My comment to Andreas is, as I said in the interview, and you just proved, technology got us in to this mess. It is not getting us out. It is only getting us deeper into it. Thank you for offering more evidence. Okay. Uh, we're going to hear from Toy, T O Y E. You know, one thing I forgot to mention yesterday is how many people uh, said that I am a Bill Gates groupie, that I, I am a big supporter of Bill Gates. Uh, probably 200 at least comments. <clears throat> Yikes! Bill Gates loves this guy. <clears throat> Amazing to get to that age and still not be able to see lends to my theory that either you are born with discernment or you're not. I'll tell you his, meaning my first problem, he has never had children and lived out the human experience. This would be a different man at his age than what we see now. Turn off CNN, bro. I was hoping he would say he departed the far-left, ignorant journalist world of his youth and realized he had been brainwashed and propagandized. Instead, he carried it with him throughout his life. My response to Toy, <clears throat> as I said in the interview, had you listened, <clears throat> I would be a very different man today if I had bred. I would be homicidal. I would very much support increasing the death rate. If I have watched 20 minutes of CNN or Fox News since the day I was born, I would be shocked. I threw my TV out the window in 1998 10 years before I became a doomer. And I'm not going to get off into a rant about the quality of uh, mainstream uh, journalism. Uh, I absolutely uh, love this. I, I'm not going to read his uh, comment, really. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's a good comment. I just love this man's uh, moniker, you know, the name he uses, I assume it's a he, 
on uh, <laughs> on YouTube. Brutal, no, brutally brutal brutality. Brutally brutal brutality. I would love to read his long long comment. Uh, okay. So we're going to hear from a fellow named Sean Whelan, and I really enjoyed this comment because this is coming from a 20-something, a, a somebody who is uh, in his mid-20s. So I'm going to take some time to read this young man's uh, comment because it needs to be heard. So since I don't hear from many people in their 20s, <clears throat> I will say my group of friends and I, all aged about 22 to 26, are in complete agreement with everything you said, and most of us have been aware of this since we were about 17, <clears throat> probably due to the fact that most of us born between 1900 and 2000 have been told since day one of public school how much the world is in crisis and that it is our job to fix it. So, leaning to the pessimistic side of things, we have basically all been brainwashed that we are being left a burning world to try to extinguish. Most of us... <clears throat> through aging have come to realize how futile of an effort it truly is. I have an extreme view of reproduction that is not popular with most people. I have not gone as far as sterilization, but I have considered it. I agree when he, meaning I, meaning me, says he is a realist because you can see it in his eyes. He isn't unhappy. I have tried explaining this to my mother and father deeply that regardless of my views, I am not unhappy in my life. <clears throat> and I enjoy every day. You do not have to let impending doom ruin your life because at the end, nothing matters anyway. We are but a blip in cosmic existence. Coming to peace with life having no meaning is a liberating thing. Thank you for showing that there are others who can live happily through this mindset. Great interview. My response to Sean was, sounds like you have it pretty well figured out, young man. Thank you for not breeding. And another thing that I forgot to mention yesterday is all of the people who automatically assume I am a doomsday Prepper. I think two of the article, two of the comments is going to talk about this. This is from Keefe Kicks. Keefe Kicks, Doomsday Preppers in 1980. We're all dead in five years. Doomsday Preppers in 2022. We are all dead in five years. Rinse and repeat. My comment to Keefe Kicks, did I say anywhere in this video that I am a doomsday prepper or that we are all dead in five years? Obviously, we had a failure to communicate. Okay, here is Megaphone, no, Megafan258. Megafan's question is, what is this with this in quote marks? What is this? My answer to what is this? This, this is the most terrifying four-letter word in the English language and almost a twin of 
shit. Okay, Daddy says, this motherfucker is barefoot. And my buddy, Alan David Doan, who I've, I have had the pleasure of actually meeting in real life, uh, Alan says, when I met him, I am pretty sure, uh, I am pretty sure he had boots on, but you gotta get a look together for a Rolling Stone type photo shoot. My res response to Alan was, unfortunately, our, misgu our misguided cultural norms still require folks to wear shoes when meeting folks at most public places. All right, here is Mark McGrath repeating another very common theme uh, throughout that I am a drug addict. That obviously anybody who thinks that humans are the problem is a drug addict. There are 200 comments like this one. No, oh, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what did I say? I, did I already say this is Mark McGrath, 1776. This guy, meaning me, is an example of what happens when you have taken too many hits of acid. My response to Mark McGrath and uh, many others is, for the record, I have never one time in my entire life taken a hit of acid, though many folks who know me highly recommend that I should. All right, let's hear, oh, we have another comment about someone who for some reason thinks I am a doomsday prepper. This is from Amahana. Amahana says, and I agree with Amahana, Doomsday prepping is really just an expensive hobby. <clears throat> and while I 100% agree with Amahana, my uh, response was that, you know, how expensive it is, that is just one reason, though not the main reason, that I am not a doomsday prepper and never will be. Talk about clueless morons, and of course, the uh, the main re the the, uh, the the main reason I'm not a doomsday prepper. Well, there's two reasons: is you cannot prepare for what's coming, and number two, I have exactly zero interest for surviving the uh, collapse of global industrial civilization as. Uh, my good friend uh, Antonio Reed, who's I think 28 now, told me, uh, you know, just make it a clean headshot when you come for my last bean of beanie weenies, my last can of beanie weenies. Just one favor, could you please make it a clean headshot? I have no desire to be around for what's coming down this pike. Okay, we're going to hear from Jeremy. This is the often, you know, I've been hearing this since day one of doing this, about, you know, doomsday preachers are obviously wrong because every other doomsday prophecy has been wrong. <clears throat> when I imagine what life was like in the past, seeing things through the lens of our forebears, not knowing their outcome, I think that it must have seemed nearly certain many times that the world was going to end previously, although it did not, like during the Black Plague in Europe, or during World War I and the 1918 flu, then during the Depression, and on into World War II as just a couple of examples. However, the world did not end 
and somehow things pulled through and made it, and we made it back up by the bootstraps to better days again. So I truly do not think we know for sure if we will pull through or not, but history would say that most likely things will work out mm -hmm, and be on the up and up again. Remember, it is not really truly over for sure until a fat lady sings, best not to count your chicks before they hatch. And this is my comment to Jeremy and anybody else making this, you know, any other apocalyptimist making this uh, pretty much cliche comment. <clears throat> I noticed your last example, you know, which was World War II, was from a time less than a century ago when there were approximately one-third as many humans on the planet as there are now. Okay, we're going to go from acid to marijuana and hear from Clay. And I think my buddy Groot I might be listening to this, uh, can, relate to the, to, can relate to this. Clay says, smoke another one, man. My response to Clay was, I think the last time I smoked a joint or technically ate a brownie was in mid-September. If I smoked a quarter ounce of weed in 2022, I would be shocked. Never smoked a tobacco cigarette since the day I was born. Okay, these, these comments are what have come in in just the last few hours. Uh, uh, okay, this is Drew Jazz. The mistake environmentalism made was to go down this guy's anti-human path. It, meaning environmentalism, would be more successful as a movement if it focused on simultaneously improving the environment and the human condition. Humans are not separate from nature. We are simply a part of it. My response, thank you for the laugh. Environmentalism is a sick joke. I am not an environmentalist. I am a doomer. I am embarrassed that I ever called myself an environmentalist or a lefty. Noki Doki says, I'm a fucking clueless moron. Thanks. I learned something today. My comment to Noki Doki is, I remember the very night I figured out that about myself, you know, that I was a clueless moron. Worst night of my life. I hope you can turn back the clock and forget learning that about yourself. Otherwise, you can end up like me. Here is from Osmosis Bones. You know, talking about when I was uh, talking about being raised by strong southern black women. Osmosis Bones, his mannerisms and enthusiasm just remind me of a black woman from Atlanta. Love it. My response to Osmosis Bones, and I make the best creamed corn and collard greens you have ever tasted. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Forever Amber. Thank you, Forever Amber. Being angry and smart is not a good combination. Your pessimism is not appreciated, even if there is validity to what you are saying. My response to Forever Amber 
That was probably the single most spot on comment in this entire thread. It sums up everything I tried to say in 40 minutes. Thank you. All right, we're going, we're going to have two more since I realize I'm talking to myself. This is from No Fat Chicks. No Fat Chicks. Uh, you know, she goes on and on with the hilarious thing that I should kill myself because I think there's too many, uh, there's too many people on the planet so obviously, if I think there's too many people on a planet of 8 billion people, by removing one 63-year-old doomer uh, who has never bred is going to solve the planet of too many people on the planet. So we're going to skip through all of that hilarious original knee slapping uh, and then get to... The point here, no fat chicks. I agree, people are a plague, but it's not the guy driving to two different jobs to feed his kids. It is these, it is those, you know, meaning me, those jet setting, baby raping, blood drinking lizard people that feel the need to lecture us unsophisticated uneducated peasants because we have a car and refrigeration <laughs> so thank you i you know i've been called a lot of things uh, narcissist uh, everything from narcissist to nazi uh, but I don't think in my in 14 years I have ever been labeled a jet setting, baby raping, blood drinking lizard person for thinking there are too many humans on the planet. My response to no fat chicks. I absolutely love your YouTube moniker, skinny girl. If you are ever in the market for a jet setting, baby raping, blood circling lizard person, you know where to find me, darling. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to skip through several uh, more. Uh, Good Lord, how many, uh... All right, we're going to wrap this up with some fellow named Bella Lagrisi. Bella Lagrisi is going to have the last word in uh, today's Chronicle of the Collapse. Take it away, Bella Lagrisi. <clears throat> Thanks, soft white underbelly. Your amazing interviews are a window into humanity's diversity, resilience, and dysfunction. Sam's understanding of and response to the predicament facing industrial civilization is completely correct and extremely appropriate. Doomers are forced to be in the present moment, and that is our superpower. <clears throat> there is no Narcan for extinction. Enjoy what you have now. Tell people you love them. Laugh all you can. And my response to Bella Lugrisi is, I love you, brother. <laughs> there is no Narcan for extinction. Uh, there you go. Bella Lugrisi said it all. Tell people you love them 
and laugh while you still can. And I, I, uh, going with those words of advice, I am going to wrap up today's uh, chronicle of the collapse and uh, get out there and enjoy this spectacularly gorgeous first day of winter while I still can. Bye, guys.